For the last 20 years, NASA has been observing the variability in primary productivity on land and in the ocean. This movie shows the seasonal progression of land vegetation and variability of ocean chlorophyll over that time. All the phytoplankton that are responsible for the changes in color and ocean in this video that you see uh, make up only 10% of the global biomass. They account for about half of the global primary production. The vertical transfer of carbon sequestered by the phytoplankton and associated organic marine biomass from the upper ocean to the interior, uh, where it remains out of contact with the atmosphere, accounts for 70% of the vertical carbon gradient in the ocean, contributing to the extensive storage of carbon within the ocean. This process is commonly referred as biological pump. This video is from the upward looking camera located just below the euphotic zone. What you see is a seven day time lapse of diverse sinking particles settling into the gel trap. This is biological pump in action. My name is Ivona Tetinich. I am a scientist at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in USRA, and I'm serving as a project scientist for EXPORTS. EXPORTS stand for Export Processes in the Ocean for Remote Sensing, and EXPORTS is a large field campaign funded by NASA and co-funded by NSF. The goal of this field campaign is to predict the export and fate of ocean net primary productivity from satellites and other observations. In this simplistic representation of the ocean, we're actually looking at two different ecosystems, one sitting in the euphotic zone and second one sitting just below it in the twilight zone. Net primary production happens in the wellhead zone, uh, thanks to the phytoplankton and the carbon that get, gets entrained into the ecosystem and fuels the processes in the euphotic zone. A portion of that carbon gets exported into the twilight zone for the fueling processes inside of it. The pathway the carbon takes as it gets getting transferred from the euphotic zone to the twilight zone is something that we're interested in. First pathway is called sinking particle pump, where carbon gets exported in the shape of dead, diet, dead phytoplankton, aggregates, or sinking fecal matter. The second one, migrating pump, is a little bit more active one, where mesozooplankton goes up and down into the water column on a daily basis and excretes and respires some of the carbon in the twilight zone. The third one is a physical driven process where, thanks to the overturning or subduction of the water on certain fronts, we have an injection of the surface water into the twilight zone and injection of everything else that is in that surface water, including particulate organic carbon and dissolved organic carbon. Consumption of the carbon in the twilight zone is highly variable and the rate um, through which this carbon gets consumed determines the effect that upper ocean has on the carbon budget in the twilight zone. In order to determine how many of these pathways need to be well resolved or defined and included in models to accurately represent the system, we have selected two sides that represent two extremes of the, power of the carbon pump. On the left side, you see North Pacific um, Station Papa, where biology is really determining the way the biological carbon pump works. These lines con connected in the simple schematics are showing you different steps that carbon will take as it's recycled in the surface and in twilight zone. On the opposite side of the spectra, we have North Atlantic Spring Bloom, where only a couple of lines connecting um, are connected in this schematic, showing you that Really, there's not too many pathways that carbon will take as it's traveling down the water column. This is replicated in the graph in the center, showing you that majority of this carbon that gets produced in North Pacific, only a small portion gets exported to the depth, which is opposite the North Atlantic bloom, where majority of the sequestered carbon gets exported below the euphotic zone. It takes a village. To be more precise, it takes an army of scientists and 19 different projects, including 180 PIs, students, postdocs, techs, to answer three main science questions of exports. How do the upper ocean ecosystem characteristics determine the vertical transfer of organic matter from the well-lit surface ocean? What controls the efficiency of that transfer below that well-lit surface ocean? And ultimately, how can the knowledge gained 
during these cruises be used to reduce uncertainties in contemporary and future estimates of the exports and fates of net primary production. These scientists make a beautiful interdisciplinary mosaic, addressing different aspects of the oceanic carbon export while bringing along different set of skills and techniques. So let me take you on a ride in the North Pacific. Um, this is the first episode of the export saga where we explore the functionality of the biological carbon pump in a system where physics shouldn't be really impacting the way things work. This video is showing you the movement of assets during the North Pacific um, program of exports. Um, the central platform of this campaign was a Lagrangian float that was followed by the glider and a process ship. Survey vessel operated a large, larger um, area trying to offer an insight of what's happening outside of the patch of water that we were following. Short term um, autonomous vehicles were deployed during three different epochs from the process ship and two bio argots were deployed um, during the cruise that stayed there trying to offer us an insight about the science that we saw, how does it, how does it nest in a long-term uh, processes in the area. What this video is also showing you is the complexity of the program that has so many different things inside of it. These vignettes are kind of trying to give you an insight in all different aspects of science that were done um, during the North Pacific cruise. Of course, as usually, we try to rely on satellite imagery, but I mean, kind of, it's cloudy there, so it failed. But they didn't stop the scientists to really try to look into different aspects of the biological carbon pump in the North Pacific, from measuring the availability of the nutrients and how did these creatures present there react to the changes in their environmental conditions. We also measured the presence or absence of different um, microbial micro, microbes, uh, phytoplankton, zooplankton, as well as the optical properties of the water column that allows us ultimately to connect everything back to the remote sensing. Numerous measurements were done to explore the aspects of the sinking particles and to kind of really try, try to resolve the pathways that are present in this um, ecosystem. And then North Atlantic in spring 2020. North Atlantic was supposed to offer a different story, a biology driven by physics. Um, on this image, you can see stylized sea surface height in patches in the physical space. Um, they're driving biology and ultimately carbon flux. Um, our site, Porcupine Abyssin Basin, uh, was a study site similar to the one in North Pacific. It's been a target of numerous scientific occupation. Everything was ready to go, and then COVID happened. We had to cancel the cruise and um, kind of tried to figure out what we're going to do next. Well, over the last year, science of export has seen a tremendous growth. Numerous papers, either in prep or publication, are published. New collaborations have been formed and all while slowly planning the logistics for the repeat of the next field campaign. And so far, that one is happening. North Atlantic spring 2021 this time. Same as last year, we're targeting the North Atlantic during the spring phytoplankton bloom when physics is driving the biology. Same site, same time of the year. This year, our collaborators are our colleagues from Ocean Twilight Zone Project from Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute and colleagues from National Oceanographic Center in Southampton, whose research vessels we are using. Why North Atlantic? Well, as I said previously, it offers this like really perfect opposite end member to our first field campaign. Although we're expecting rough seas, we are expecting so, to see one of the world's largest carbon export uh, events, which is going to offer us um, a view, hopefully completely different pathways uh, than the ones that we encountered in North Pacific. And this is the story about exports. Um, there's only so much science or knowledge that I can push into the 10 minutes, but I hope you enjoy the story. 
If you want to learn more, please visit our website where you can learn more about science, logistics, and what's happening in general with the Exports Project. Also follow us on NASA Ocean social media to learn more about our campaign as well as some of the science. Thank you for your attention.